In this video, I'm going to show you a few cool features of Google Sheets and why you may want to consider using it as a patient management system. Especially if you don't have an IT department or if you are under-resourced. The example in this video is from a military hospital. However, in this video, the data is entirely fictional. The names, numbers, IDs and other personal information shown in this video are not those of real persons. The example shown here has not been tested formally and officially, but I do think it has great potential. Let's go through some of the features of this patient management system. Adding records. One of the coolest features of this document is that it has a user form where you can add records. Once you have saved the record, that record is added to the database sheet. There you can see the new database record added. One of the features of a good database management system is keeping the database clean and organized. To spot empty records, have a look at this column. Let's see what happens if I add an empty record and I don't add any data to it. The spreadsheet immediately flags it, indicating that I should add data to that record. Another feature of a good database management system is having the ability to modify records. Let's search a record that we want to modify. Once the record is displayed, you can go ahead and change the data. When you are done changing the data, click on the Modify button. To view or verify this record, click on the Database button. This will take you to the database sheet. There is also a Delete button, which deletes the record. Or you can go to the database sheet and delete the whole row from there. You can also delete multiple records at once. An important management aspect in healthcare is getting information on time passed since last appointment. Navigate to the Appointments tab or click on the Appointments button. This will take you to the Appointments data entry form. From here, you can search a record and add appointment dates. You can also search a record to reveal information on appointments. Have a look at the orange block. This information should correspond to the information in the database sheet. If you go to the database sheet, you will notice that there are various drop-down lists. These were done with data validation. These lists are found in the Categories tab, a support sheet. Back to the database sheet, you will notice that certain cells are filled with green. This is conditional formatting. As soon as you enter data into these cells, they change color. Probably the coolest feature about this document is that it can create summary documents. Click on the Generate Documents button. Go to the Google Drive folder and you will notice documents being generated one by one. Give some chance for this script to run. Then you may choose to open any one of these documents to add information manually. Information on clinical presentation is often added manually. This script is nice because it automates the personal information part like name, surname, age, date of birth and then it allows you to focus more on the manual part which is clinical presentation and progress notes. As you may have noticed, there are these navigating buttons. In this example, they are used to go to the send WhatsApp buttons. 
Over here, you would choose the type of message and then you would click on the button to navigate to the next column where you would send the WhatsApp. You can also go back if you want to change something. When you're ready to send, you simply click on the WhatsApp link or button. Sending emails. In the database sheet, there are columns where you can edit the subject, greeting and the content of the email and also the signature. Once you are done, you can click on the send email link. This will open up your mail application. Just some rules for the document. I would recommend that you keep the frozen rows and columns because this just makes navigating the document easier. You may notice that there are these fill to end buttons specifically under the WhatsApp columns. You would use these to copy or fill the text down but this is the only place where you would do that because in most of the other columns there are array formulas which do the job for you. I would advise you not to delete the first row of the database sheet because this row contains formulas. I would advise you not to delete any of the columns. I would advise you not to edit cells under columns that explicitly say don't edit and also don't change the names of columns as these are linked to scripts. For a list of these rules, go to the Spreadsheet Rules tab. Before you can use the spreadsheet and any of its functions, you will need to copy it to your own personal Google Drive. Setup Creating your own copies The first step is to copy and paste the URL into your browser. You will notice that this is a view-only document. Go to File, click on Make a Copy. Rename the copy and save it to your personal Google Drive. Do the same for the second document. Create a folder on your Google Drive called Patient Summaries. Within the same folder, create a subfolder called Documents Generated. This is the folder structure that I recommend. If you prefer, you may also place your Google Sheet document within this location. Before you run any scripts in this document, you will first need to authorize them. You will get this prompt, click on continue, then Click on your Google account. Click on Advanced. Click on the script there at the bottom. Scroll down and click on Allow. To get the Generate Document script to work, do the following. Click on Extensions, then App Script. Click on Create Docs Code. Find this piece of code indicated by the arrow. This will be the URL of your template document. However, not the whole URL, just the part between the D slash and the slash edit part. Copy this part of the URL and paste it into the code. Next, you will need to find the URL of the folder in which the generated documents are placed. Copy the part after folders forward slash. Paste this into the code. Next, save the code. That's it. Your scripts should now work. I would just caution you against moving your folders as you would then need to repeat some of the steps in the setup. Other important parts in the code. 
this is only for those who want to add lines to the code or change the code. In the advanced form and the appointments form, there are a couple of places where you will see this code with cells like C4, C7, C9, C11 and so forth. Those refer to these cells. In the create Google Docs code, there are a couple of lines of code like this. These correspond to the columns in the database sheet. Thank you for watching. Feel free to comment.